August 23, 2023, a day when India's Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft made history by becoming the first to touch down on the lunar South Pole, a place we can't normally see from Earth. What makes this lunar hideaway so fascinating to scientists? Well, it turns out it's hiding something precious – lunar ice. This place is believed to be more abundant with this ice than what we found up north. And it's not hard to see why scientists are so buzzed up about it. It's a frozen water source, and it could become our key to building a permanent lunar home, or even fueling missions all the way to Mars. Scientists knew about this ice for over two decades, since the NASA spacecraft accidentally stumbled upon it during one of the missions. Then in 2018, NASA triumphantly declared that they're 100% sure about it. They said that the south pole of the moon is abundant with water. Now picture this. Future lunar settlers could tap into this water supply. It could help us sustain life in the barren lunar landscape. Plus, by cleverly splitting the water into oxygen and hydrogen, we could receive both air and rocket fuel. All this will make moon missions more feasible and self-sustaining. It's also a great glimpse into the past. This ice, may be as old as the moon itself, could unlock the moon's and Earth's deep mysteries. But it turns out that water isn't rare in space at all. There might be lots of planets out there where life could thrive. We know this because we started finding water vapor around stars. And this water is remarkably similar to the water in our own solar system. This discovery suggests that the water on Earth originally came from space. Water forms around stars in the cloud of extremely hot vapor. Then it turns into ice and sticks to tiny dust particles. These particles stick together over time and become bigger objects, like comets, planets, and other things. Some of these become comets and planets in our own solar system. And this is how water is being spread across the universe. And it may be how it got to our planet and the moon too. Scientists think that the lunar ice might have journeyed here eons ago. Maybe it hitched a ride on water-rich asteroids that smacked into the moon's surface. All this has big implications for us. The Southern Pole is an ideal canvas for humanity to establish a real moon base. Imagine brick domes connected by secret underground tunnels. They'll be bustling with people busily operating computers. Some others will be cruising the lunar landscape in their jeeps or on their way to mine precious resources. We have some pretty cool ideas on how to build this. First, you probably imagine hauling hefty and water-draining shelters all the way from Earth. But maybe there's a more effective way. Think about our history as a civilization. Every time we ventured to a new place, we surveyed the surroundings for available resources and used them to survive and thrive. This is how we spread across our own planet. So why shouldn't we spread across the moon the same way? Now, you might wonder what resources the moon might offer. We know about the ice, and it can be turned into water. But we can clearly see that our planet lacks lush greenery and edible food. Well, it might not be obvious, but the Moon does have something to offer – mineral resources and sunlight. Unlike Earth, where the Sun rises and sets, the lunar poles offer quite a beautiful sight. The Sun gracefully orbits the horizon the entire day. Which means it can provide an almost uninterrupted source of power. Imagine living in a world bathed in perpetual sunlight. I'm sure the solar panels will love it. Me? Mm, not so much. Still, we could use not only the sun's light, but also its heat. Honestly, we should just use everything. If we're left with spare metal while producing oxygen, find a purpose for that metal too. We need to treat the environment responsibly, not only on Earth, but on the moon as well. Which is why scientists are learning how to turn the moon's most abundant resources, regolith, into sturdy bricks. They've been quite inventive in figuring out how to create moon bricks. Scientists want to use the sun's heat to melt lunar dust, layer by layer, essentially creating a 3D printer for moon dust. Engineers have also cooked up bricks using solar ovens and zapped lunar soil with microwaves. They've become quite adept at it. So yeah, 
perhaps we're going to establish a little brick factory on the moon and build regolith houses. It's like Minecraft in real life. As soon as you find some cool new material, you gotta build a tiny house with it. If successful, these bricks could be used to construct entire buildings, potentially covering inflatable modules or giving new life to abandoned landers. So, will astronauts need to become skilled bricklayers? Well, they won't do everything themselves. We'd have to create a small automated system involving robots working collaboratively. Humans will, of course, oversee the construction site. Despite all this automation, scientists believe that living on the moon is going to be, well, call it cozy. The designs may involve stacked living quarters or multi-purpose areas. However, there would be some challenges too. On the moon, things get extreme. Imagine scorching temperatures that can go up to 212 degrees Fahrenheit during the day. And at night, they plunge down to a chilly minus 290 degrees. And it's not just the weather. The moon gets relentlessly exposed to solar radiation, cosmic rays, and micrometeorite impacts. All these things gradually wear down anything on its surface. Another big challenge is the lunar dust. On the moon, there's no air to breathe, and the dust there can cause problems. And this one isn't only regular dust. It's super clingy and can even make astronauts sneeze and have watery eyes. <laughs> as if they're having a lunar hay fever. It can also damage equipment and spacesuits. It's not something you want to mess with. Scientists have found that the dust is made when meteors hit the moon, creating tiny particles and sharp glass shards. It's toxic, and its tiny particles can float around in low lunar gravity, making it hard to breathe. Unlike on Earth, the moon doesn't have wind or rain to clean it away. So now they're studying it to find out how to prevent this annoying problem from ruining their entire mission. There's more to this lunar haven than meets the eye. Scientists also want to delve into the mysteries of low-frequency electromagnetic waves there. These waves are whispers from the far reaches of the universe. These elusive signals have remained hidden from us for ages. We only caught some cacophony of radio and other background noise, but that's it. On the moon's dark side, however, we can finally record and study them. Studying these waves will help scientists to unlock the secrets of the universe's origins. It's not just about the Earth or the moon. We're talking about peering back to the very beginnings of our world. Our new lunar lab might help us to forever reshape our understanding of the cosmos. So, NASA has some big plans on the moon now. Their Artemis mission completed a successful return to Earth in December 2022, after nearly a month in space. It ventured far beyond the moon. This mission proved the capabilities of some of our recent technological developments that will help us explore Mars. The goal of Artemis is to establish a lasting presence on the moon. They want to create a gateway, like a space station in orbit around the satellite, to help with the landings. Artemis II is set to carry astronauts to lunar orbit in 2024, and during Artemis III, which should take place in the mid-2020s, two astronauts will touch down near the Moon's south pole. It's quite possible that the lunar base will be built within the next couple of decades. So stay tuned! That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.